Hey everyone, my name is Chris Green. Today's video is all about making your acoustic guitar sound as great as possible. Now, the point of this video as I break down my recording process and also how I'm gonna mix this acoustic guitar, it's not that you go out and have the exact same gear that I'm using, but I wanna cover as many of the concepts as possible so that might give you a little bit of an idea of how you might better your own acoustic guitar mix. Truth is, you don't have to have the same guitar, the same microphones, the same preamp, and the same plugins. But all these concepts should apply no matter what situation you're in in recording the acoustic guitar. So let's get started. First things first, I wanna go over a brief overview of what I'm using in today's video. Of course, this is my wife's Taylor GS Mini acoustic guitar. And then the microphones I'm using for this video is an SM81 from Shure and the Neumann TLM 103. Now I've done a video comparing these two microphones in the past, and I think they both sound relatively similar. So if you're in the market of looking for something that you're gonna be recording acoustic instruments with, I highly recommend you check out the Shure SM81. It's much more affordable than the large diaphragm condenser mic that is the Neumann TLM 103. But I like these two together because what I'll do is I'll have my large diaphragm condenser mic pointed at the body of my acoustic guitar to get a lot of that low end punch. And then also the SM81 is gonna be more pointed towards the 12th fret of the neck. So to get more of the detail of as I'm finger picking or getting some brightness from the guitar. Now these two microphones, I highly recommend that you record in stereo. I've got these two microphones spaced out and the goal is that we have a three to one ratio. So let's say that I've got these two microphones three feet apart just for math's sake, okay? To simplify it a little bit. If these two microphones are three feet apart, then I need to be one foot away from each microphone. So as my guitar itself is making a triangle, this triangle needs to be a little bit lopsided. I need the distance between the microphones to be a three to one ratio. So for every foot that I'm away from a microphone, I need these microphones to be three feet if they're gonna be in phase. I highly recommend that you try to record in stereo, even if you don't have a matched pair of microphones. I think it can also sound great that these two microphones don't sound identical to each other. You could be using something like a Shure SM57 or a Shure SM7B. Doesn't matter what kind of microphone you're using, I just highly recommend that if you're recording acoustic guitar that you record in stereo. These two microphones are going into my audio interface. This is an Apollo twin duo from Universal Audio. Any two channel audio interface is gonna give you good results. I've got the SM81 going into channel one. I've got the Neumann TLM 103 going into channel two. For today's video, I'm not gonna be using any special or fancy Universal Audio plugins to emulate any sort of vintage hardware. I'm just using the basic stock preamps that come with my interface. And of course, that's going into PreSonus Studio One. PreSonus Studio One is what I use to record and mix music. It is called a DAW, a Digital Audio Workstation. Feel free to use your own choice or preference of DAW. You can use Logic, Pro Tools, GarageBand. There are many free editions of software out there, but that's the basic setup of how I'm gonna be recording. Now I do use a capo every now and then. I highly recommend you get one that you can adjust the tension. This is a G7 capo. So what's great about this and what makes it a little different than those Kaiser clip-on capos uh, is that it's not spring-loaded. You can actually adjust the tension. So it's not squeezing the life out of your guitar. Now, you may notice I have a cable coming out of my guitar. That's because I've got it plugged into my Peterson Strobo Stomp HD tuner that's on the floor. So every now and then I can check the tuning of my acoustic guitar. Of course, it's very important. Make sure that when you're recording, you're in tune as much in tune as possible. So that's my setup. Now I need to get to recording some acoustic guitar so that we can mix it up and make it sound great. The headphones I'm using in today's video, these are the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pros. These are closed back headphones, so that way the click track is not gonna get picked up by the microphones. Now PreSonus Studio One, I wanna make sure I've got a relatively simple tempo setup. I think for today's video, I'm gonna tap out something like this. Sorry, about 82 beats per minute. We're in 4-4. As I've got these two microphones set up, I need to make sure that they are gain staged. I'm getting a good signal. So what I will do is I'll grab my guitar pick and I'll try to find a relatively uniform position here.
Okay, so now I've got the two microphones relatively set up where I like them. A lot of times what you can do is you can hit the mono switch on your audio interface if you have a mono switch so that you can check your mix because what you'll hear is when you switch it to mono, you'll really be able to hear if stuff is in phase or not. If it's out of phase, it basically sounds like you're swimming in an ocean. If it's in phase, it'll almost sound like one microphone right in the middle. And that's really what you want. So again, I've got the SM81 on this side, TLM-103 on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and record one acoustic guitar track that's mainly finger picking, just going through some chords. And then I'll record a second guitar track that we can use. It's a little bit more like lead stuff happening. So let's go ahead and record. <laughs> All right, now I'm just going to duplicate that track. I'll enable some recording here. And I'm going to use my capo for this one. I'll capo up on the second fret since I was in the key of D. Capo up on the second fret so I can play in C chord shapes. So here in Studio One, I've got my two acoustic guitar tracks. The first one was very much finger picking. The second one was strumming. Let's check a listen to as they are. There's no plugins, no processing. It's just as they were recorded. Okay, great. Now, the first thing I want to do is go through and pan these two guitars out. So I need to pick one side or the other. So I'm going to take this uh, first guitar that we recorded. I'm going to put it on the left. I'm going to put left 40. And the second guitar is going to go right 40. Let's see a difference that makes early on. Already sounding pretty wide as it is. And also I want to say that obviously this is going to depend on the context of what song you're working on. If I were just doing a song that had just a vocal and just these two guitars, I may not pan things out as wide as I would if it were a full dense mix. If you've got drums, pianos, strings, whatever it may be, you can get away with having a wider pan. But even though they're recorded in stereo, I'm still going to push them out a little bit left and right. The second thing I want to do is just adjust the overall volume of the strummed acoustic guitar track. Now I kept the preamp settings completely the same, but I compensate because the strumming guitar is significantly louder than the finger picked guitar. And you can hear that as it's going. So a good place to start. I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to go with minus six dB. Let's hear how that sounds, especially when the guitar is strumming on the second channel. And now those two acoustic guitar tracks already sound great, just having a little bit of panning and some level adjustment, but we do want to do a little bit more processing. So the first thing I like to do, if I'm just using what comes from PreSonus, they have what's called the fat channel, which is basically emulating what you get from a console. So it's going to have things like a high pass filter, a gate, a compressor, and an EQ. Now on this one, I want to make the equalizer come first. I'm going to head and enable the equalizer. And I'm going to solo the first guitar. And as the first guitar is playing in solo, I want to make a few changes that are just right off the bat. I do want to add a high pass filter because my acoustic guitar should not have 20, 30, 40 hertz in it. Uh, it's arguable or you can debate about how much high pass filtering you want to put on your acoustic guitar. But the more instruments you have in your mix, the more high pass filter you're going to want to use. You might need to roll it up to something like 120 hertz 
if that's what you need. But for now, I'm just going to set a high pass filter. You'll see me doing that as the track is playing. I'm going to do a little bit of cut in the low mids, and then I might do a little bit of a boost in the high end just to give it a hyped sound. Here we go. Okay, so as you can see, when I engage the high pass filter, you can go over here on the fat channel and you have your high pass settings right here. I've got it right around 66, 68 hertz right there. And then on the EQ, you can see as I was going through, I'm just kind of trying to isolate some frequencies that are having some of a honky or a low end rumble to them. Just cutting out a little bit. This is on its way to about, that's about three or four decibels being cut right around 314 hertz. And then up here around 8K, on its way to 9K, I'm just giving a little 2 dB boost. So let's listen to the EQ before and after. Here's before. Now, some of those notes that are ringing out or being particularly resonant, this is where the compressor is going to come in. So before I do any compressing, I usually want to handle the low end. Low end energy tends to throw your compressors all out of whack because they focus so much on the low end, you don't get to tame some of those higher frequencies. So on the compressor, one of the things that PreSonus will let you do is we're going to emulate an LA-2A. An LA-2A is an optical compressor. And what I really like about this, especially for beginners, is that it's as simple as it can be. You have a peak reduction knob, which you want to turn up. The more you turn it up, the more you're going to be reducing some of those transients. You're going to be making it a little bit more compressed. And then you can adjust the overall gain after it's over. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to set the loop region. I'm going to let it play. And I'm going to get probably around six decibels of compression on this LA-2A. You could hear definitely when I got the peak reduction knob up enough to where it was actually affecting the signal, you could hear something kick in. It just started to sound kind of gluey, and that's what I'm going for. I want it to sound processed. Okay, so we're getting we're getting about six decibels of compression on some of the louder portions, and I'm just using the gain knob to compensate. So here is our compressor. Here is before. Now, essentially, I want to do the same thing on the other guitar, but some of the settings are going to have to change just because the other guitar is being so much louder. So I'm just going to click and drag the fat channel over to the second guitar track, and then I'm going to isolate guitar number two. I'm going to see how it's handling some of the settings from the other guitar. Okay, I like that very much. Now let's listen to both guitars at the same time now that they've had some EQ and some compression. Sounds good so far. I do want to add some space to these guitars. I'm going to achieve that with a delay plugin. Now what I want to do is create effects channels for these. So I'm going to right click and go to add effects. Call this one delay left. I'm going to create another one. And call this 
delay right. Now, reason I'm calling them delay left and delay right, so what I want to do is I want to take the guitar that's in my left ear, and I want it to have a delayed signal, but only on the right ear. So that way, what we're going to be hearing is a faux stereo. It's almost like a stereo on top of a stereo mix. All right, so here are my two acoustic guitars. The first one is going left 50. The second one's going right 50. That's just me being a little bit OCD about the numbers there. The delay level, the level that they're being sent to the delay is at minus 12 because I don't want the delay to be the same volume as the original signal. It's only meant to give, again, that kind of faux stereo sound. Now, both delays have similar settings. I've got the feedback set to about 5%. The time of the delay is at 61 milliseconds, and then the dry wet knob is all the way up. I'm also cutting a lot of the high end frequencies because you're, the more high end frequencies you're hearing, that pick attack or the strumming sound, the more obvious it makes the delay. So I want the delay to sound a little bit duller. I want it to be more mid-range heavy. Again, just to give that ambient sort of reverb sense. Now, the only difference between these two delays is that the delay left is obviously being panned to the left by 50. The delay right is being panned by 50. And actually, I could probably take these and just all the way spread them out. Let's take a listen to these delays working together. Okay, now the last thing I want to do is I would, ideally, I would bust these two together. So I'm going to take all of these tracks right here. I'm going to highlight them and I'm going to say add bus for selected channels. And I'm going to call this one acoustic guitars. So all of my tracks, the delay tracks and the guitar tracks are all being summed. They're being bussed to this one bus called acoustic guitars. And on that acoustic guitars channel, all I'm going to simply do is load up a compressor. And this compressor is meant to just be the last bit of sort of like a hug that it's giving the acoustic guitars before they're being sent out. So I'll go with something really low, maybe a 1.8 to 1 ratio. I just want a knee of about 3. I'll mess around with the ratio set we're getting. Again, about 2 to 3 levels of compression at the loudest parts, but this is just to squeeze it all together. So let's take a listen. <laughs> Now, that being said, essentially, that is it for the acoustic guitars. Now, when you're adding in vocals, the more elements you add to this, the more full it's going to sound. But generally speaking, this is how I would mix the acoustic guitar if I'm just doing a simple singer-songwriter sort of song. It's also going to depend on musically how you're playing, if you're strumming a lot, if you're being really aggressive with your pick. You may have to tweak some of these settings, but I hope that's giving you a general overview of the recording setup, the gear that I'm using, and then also ways that you can use the plugins that come built in with Presona Studio One to get some great sounds as it is. I hope you enjoyed the video. For more content just like this, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.